Hi, in today's video, we will talk about how to create a funnel plot similar to this. And in this video, I'm actually using the COVID data. We are actually showing how each comorbidity plays its role in terms of um, the, the, the mortality rates. So we're comparing all these comorbidities based on the criteria. For example, this is a 95% uh, confidence interval, and that's a 97.5% confidence interval. And we can compare and find out the outliers. For example, we can see that uh, this is the overall mortality rate for the people who have one or um, other comorbidities. And we can see the outliers, for example, this is a 95% confidence interval, and there are certain comorbidities which are um, higher. In this case, we can see that obesity is uh, an outlier, which is outside this 95% confidence interval, but still within the 97.5 interval. Similarly, pneumopathy is also uh, on the outer layer of the 97.5 confidence interval. So let, let's start deconstructing this funnel plot and see how we can create something like this quite easily. And we are only going to use the ggplot library. There is no external library to be used. So let's get started on this. We are going to use these two libraries, ggplot for plotting the graph for the chart, and then library dplyr. Now let's prepare the data. Here is a list of some comorbidities like asthma, cardio, diabetes. So if a patient has one of these comorbidities, um, they, they have more chances or um, they, they have higher mortality rate compared to a, a person who doesn't have any comorbidities. And by the way, this is COVID data. And here are the number of cases. So for asthma, we had 145 cases for cardio we have 2768 cases etc and then another line which i'm going to show as deaths so we can see that we had 42 deaths in asthma patients we had 1069 deaths in cardio patients so let's construct our, our data frame and then we can see how it looks like so let's run the first one, cases, deaths, and then combine this in all the three uh, lists into a data frame called DF. And let's see how DF looks like. So this is a fictitious data for COVID patients. And if a person has asthma, we had 145 such cases in our in our data. And then out of 145 patients, 42 of them died. Similarly for immuno deficiency, we had 289 patients and 127 died. For renal or kidney problems, we had 14 patients in our data set and out of them, seven of them died. So let's use this uh, fictitious data and construct our funnel plot. Okay, using this data, which only had comorbidity, cases and deaths, so three columns, I'm going to create some more columns in there. For example, I'm going to create another column called death rate by comorbidity. So using deaths and the cases. So for example, in our data, if I divide 42 by 145, I'm going to get the, uh, the mortality rate for asthma patients. If I'm going to divide 13 by 36, I'm going to get the mortality rate for the Down syndrome patients. So that's what I'm doing. And then I'm also using overall death rate, which is the sum of overall deaths and the sum of overall cases. So if I look at my data set, if I sum up all the deaths and if I sum up all the cases, then I'm going to get an overall mortality rate. And then I'm actually calculating the standard error using the, the two columns which we just created above. And then this is the lower confidence interval for 95% confidence uh, interval. So using this formula, 
overall death rate minus 1.96 times standard error and the standard error was calculated here similarly the upper confidence interval and then again we are actually calculating the 99.7 percent confidence interval as well and you can change these confidence intervals uh, yourself if you want i'll give you a small table which will help you so if you want to calculate 80 percent confidence interval you use 1.282 instead of 1.96 if you wanted to do 90 percent confidence interval you would use 1.645 instead of 1.96 so similarly you can tailor it according to your need so let's create this df2 so df2 has now more columns in there so this is the death rate by comorbidity which is nothing but 42 divided by 145 in the second line this is 106 1069 divided by 2768 that gives us 38 percent mortality rate now overall death rate or the overall mortality rate is the sum of all the deaths and divided by sum of all the cases so it's it's always going to be the same and then this is the standard error lower confidence 95% um, lower confidence interval upper and 99.7% lower confidence interval and upper confidence interval so with this data in hand we are ready to plot our chart so i'll be simplifying this chart um, so i'll be going in different steps so that uh, we can see what's going on i'm just going to plot so I'll simply run the first line and the second line and the third line is going to give us the confidence level envelope which you can see in there. So we've only got these two lines so which is the upper and the lower confidence intervals for 95 percent and now i'm actually going to add two more lines in there so i'm just going in simple steps so that you can understand what's happening in the in this charting so now we have two confidence intervals there red being the 95 percent and blue being the 97.5 percent interval we haven't got our data points yet we just got the envelope now i'm going to put one more line in there and you can see that this is the overall death rate so this is our criteria against which we are going to compare uh, different uh, comorbidities so this is going to give us another line in there so this was the overall mortality rate for all the patients who had one of those comorbidities. So 38.5% approximately. This is a straight line. Still, we haven't got our data points yet on, on this chart. So let's go further now. I'm going to add one more line in there now. Now, in this case, I'm doing jump point. The data is coming from the death rate by comorbidities. So death rate by comorbidities, which is different for different comorbidities. And now you can see that we are actually comparing the data, which is very small. For example, renal, there was only 14, patients, uh, 14 cases on our data set, and out of them, seven of them died. Whereas for diabetes or for cardio, we had large number of patients and a large number of patients died as well so this chart funnel chart actually is a good visualization where you can compare different um, units who are working at a different level for example these are very high volume this is very low volume compared to that so you can in one chart you can compare all of them so let, let's run all the chart lines now and let's see what happens now it's making some sense we have some points and some are on so as long as they are within the red line they are within the 95 percent confidence interval some of them are actually sitting on the on the reference line or uh, 38 point in this case the overall mortality rate was 38 for example 
these two points are bang on the on, on that some are above or some are below but majority of them seems to be within the 95 percent confidence interval and some of them are actually touching the 90 97.5 confidence interval as well and remember you can choose your own criteria so this is against your own set criteria you can um, show them at 80% 80, 80 confidence interval or 90% or 95 depending upon what you want to use. And now I'm going to add a few more lines. By the way, all the code would be available in, um, in an RPUB notebook. So just look at the description below and you will find the, the direct link to all the code which you can run on your own. So I'm actually now putting some text labels and let's see what it does for us. Okay, so now this chart is making sense. It is actually showing each and every point. We can see cardio is, because it had higher volume, it's on the right hand side and renal was very low patient numbers. That's why it's on the left, left side. But still you are able to compare because they are still within the 95% confidence interval. And though it's going above, and some of them are actually at a lower level. So red line is your 95% confidence interval, and the blue line, which is this, and this 97.5% confidence interval. And I hope you found this information useful. Thank you very much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.